Today, Indra has decided on rain. But who can track his real intention? Wet settles on the rhododendron sheen with a leopard sound, one spotted paw before the next. Will the cloud never lift? Shall I never see the mountain goddess draw her famous bow? Have patience. In time, all these sewers, shanties, glamour queens and gods shall be reabsorbed into the 44 winks of a submariner slug or a deep sea deity, if that's how you read it, your body too, in the silt of that flawless mind. Keep patience, for after a millennium, multiplied by a cipher beyond computation, all shall be reborn and remade, not least the mountain goddess and her bow. But in the interim, which may or may not turn out to be ours, we should go to the square, a cow dust hour, while the road is still passable, and catch the crystal coach to Deradun. Either that, or prepare to be cocooned by a three day storm, spinning like a discus on a god's finger round Nanda Devi. Prepare in the sense of do nothing, apart from agree to be typecast, feet up first on the sahib white veranda. So what's it to be? Let me know before you step into the lane where last time I listened, an animal was growling like an unfed belly across the sub dark of the entire continent. Let me know now because it may be that by going down, we shall encounter nothing but air, with souls speak with tongues, while the body stays leery, and we need to prepare all possible ends, all limits to being, all bad incarnation. The alternative, and an analogue of home, is to lie in a Raj-filled graveyard above a Raj built house, preempting our turn. While well, down there, in the heat, they suppose it their birthright, the unexplained body, the inexplicable soul. But then again, it may be time well wasted. Time in which we can attempt, in a final throw, to make ourselves clearer and not make clearer seem less true, hanging on until all that we've lost gets lost itself, and that God we've ignored since the whole thing began comes sauntering through, one spotted paw before the next. <laughs>